All right, welcome. In this video, I'm just going to walk through an introduction into the ideas of sequences and series, define the words, and then just show you some examples so you can know what these words mean when we refer to them. So a sequence is simply a list of items or objects. We usually call them elements. So I just like to think of it as a list. We're writing out things. We can repeat things, but there is an order. We're going in sequence. So sequential, they have an order to them. So for example, I could do one, one, two, three, five, eight, eleven, and then I could go on dot 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 forever with this pattern. This is the Fibonacci sequence. I'll talk to you about that at the end of the video. It's just a sequence we see a lot of the time. But for now, it's just an example of an infinite sequence. That list would go on and on forever. Or we could have a finite sequence. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. I'm just writing the numbers from 10 to 1, and it's finite. Those are the only elements we have in the sequence. And instead of writing them all out each time, we have some shorthand. So we more generally write this as a sub n. In, I'm using curly braces here, and we do from n equals 1 to infinity. So when we have those indices on the outside, like n equals 1 to infinity, those are like the bounds on this sequence, where the first term is a sub 1, then we do a sub 2, a sub 3, and we do it etc. until we get to the very end. This would be an infinite sequence because it's starting at the first term and going on infinitely. I tend to use the curly braces to show that this is a sequence, but sometimes people just use parentheses. So you might see something like a sub n, where n is a natural number. That would also be an infinite sequence. Or they would write n equals 1 to infinity for an infinite sequence. We often see infinite sequences rather than finite ones, so that's why I'm highlighting those here with the infinities. So series build on the idea of sequences, and series are a sum of the elements in a sequence. So we take everything in the sequence and we add it up, and we use summation notation to write this out. So we have our sequence, a sub n, and we're gonna do the sum from n equals one to infinity. Or if we had a finite sequence, we might have something like the sum from n is one to 100. It's pretty typical to use one as the first term, so a sub one would be the first term in the sequence, but I suppose you could have a different index maybe, or you could re-index it with different numbers, but typically you're gonna see an n equals one on the bottom as the lower bound. Okay, so we have these ideas of a sequence, which is a list of elements, and then we have a series, which is the sum of all the elements in that sequence. Now I just want to talk through two ways that we often define sequences. This can either be explicit or recursive. So an explicit sequence would be something like a sub n, where n goes from 1 to infinity, and a sub n is equal to 2n for any n. So the idea is that the terms in the sequence are of the form 2n, and that n changes as we increase from 1 to infinity. This is an explicitly defined sequence because a sub n only depends on n. So a sub n is 2n. No matter what n value I give you, you can tell me the corresponding element. So I tell you n is 100, a 100. You know a sub 100 is 200. You can just tell me what it is based on the index we're given. So if we were to write them out, it'd be a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, a sub 5. And we know that each of these is just two times that index, times that subscript. So two times one, two times two, two times three, two times four, two times five, which gives us two, four, six, and eight. So the way that I have defined this, this is just one way to represent the even positive integers as a sequence. So two n for any n, where we're taking n from one to infinity, this is the positive even integers, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, etc., etc., forever and ever. This is an infinite sequence. However, sequences can also be defined recursively. So recursive basically just means it's defined on previous information or the previous terms that you found of the sequence. So the current term depends on the previous terms. Let's look at what this might look like. Let's say we're taking this sequence a sub k where k goes from 1 to infinity so an infinite sequence again and a sub k is equal to a sub k minus 1 plus 2 and let's just give us the first element let's say a sub 1 is 1. so if we look at how a sub k works it's dependent on the previous term 
a sub k minus 1. That's the one that comes before it. So the next element depends on the one that came before it, and that's what makes this recursive. Let's write out some of the terms to see what it looks like. So I'm just going to do a sub 2. That 2 goes in for k. So the second term is equal to a sub 2 minus 1 plus 2. That's just a sub 1 plus 2, which we know what a sub 1 is from how the problem was set up. It's 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. So basically, it's just taking the previous element and adding 2 to it. Take the previous element in the sequence, add 2. So we do that again. You can imagine we're going to take 3 plus 2 is 5. But let's write it out to make sure we get there. So a sub 3 is a sub 3 minus 1 plus 2. That's a sub 2 plus 2. And we know a sub 2 is 3 from the previous part. So 3 plus 2 is 5. That's our third element. So again, we can continue this sequence. So the next element will add two to what we got. We have five, so two more is seven. Two more of that is nine. Two more of that is 11. And we could keep going on in this process infinitely. So here I'm getting one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, 11, et cetera, as my elements in the sequence. And so here, this is just one way to write the odd positive integers as a sequence. I do want to comment here, if I asked you what a 100 is, you'd have to know a sub 99. You'd have to know the previous term in order to tell me what the a 100 is. We could come up with a different way to understand this and a different way to write it and so we can maybe find what it is, but as it's currently written, it depends on the previous element to know what the current element is. And we'd have to keep working backward to figure out what that element was before it and then before that, etc. Okay, so this is just an introduction to sequences in series, but I wanted to show you one example that we see a lot of the time and go through how it works. So this is the Fibonacci sequence, and there's other ways to write it, but this is just the way I'm going to write it here today. We're gonna do the sequence a sub n, where n starts at one and goes to infinity, and we're gonna define a sub n as a n minus two plus a n minus one. So to interpret this, it's the sum of the previous two elements. So each new element is the sum of the ones that came before it, a sub n minus one and a sub n minus two, the previous two. And this is a recursively defined sequence since each element is determined by the previous two elements. It depends on the elements that came before it, which then depend on the elements that came before it, etc. And if we wanna talk about what certain elements look like, let me tell you what the first two are. Let's say a sub 1 is 0 and a sub 2 is 1. So our first two elements are 0 and 1. Then if we want to find the third element, we could use this formula. So a sub 3 is a sub 3 minus 2 plus a sub 3 minus 1. And I'm getting a sub 1 plus a sub 2. This is just the first two elements that we were given in the problem. So I'm doing 0 plus 1, and that's equal to 1. Now, once we understand the pattern in our brains, we're just thinking, okay, I add the previous two elements, and it might be faster to just do it that way. So the next element will be the sum of one plus one. Those were the elements that came before it. So the next element is going to be two, but we could write it out formally with all of the steps if you wanted to really confirm and feel like the math was working. So we have a sub four, I'll write it all out here, but I'm getting a sub two plus a sub three, so that's one plus one, which is two. Now that we sort of understand the pattern, we can just continue on. So a sub five is going to be one plus two, which is three. And when I start to write out the list, I can just begin adding the previous two elements. So I'm now going to add two and three to get five. Then I'm going to add three and five to get eight. I'm going to add five and eight to get 13. Then eight and 13 to get 21. And the last one I'll write here is just 13 plus 21, that's 34. And we can do this on and on infinitely. So there are tons of cool stuff about the Fibonacci sequence I'm not talking about today. This is just an example that you'll probably see other times in your math career or just in your life. And so I wanted to mention it here as part of our introduction to sequences and series. All right, so just remember, sequence is a list of elements and series is the sum of those elements. That's it for this video. This is just meant to be a quick introduction into these terms. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.